Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to talk about artificial intelligence. Now, personally, I'm not that afraid of artificial intelligence taking over the world. I mean, we're not going to create Skynet. Humanity isn't stupid enough to arm artificial intelligence. Oh. Oh, yeah, maybe we are that stupid. Okay, well, as long as we never teach artificial intelligence how to program, it's not going to, you know, get smarter and better over time. Oh. <laughs> okay, we're doomed. So welcome to Skynet Jr., ladies and gentlemen. This here is GitHub's Copilot. They first launched this in like tech preview about a year ago. And let's just say it is problematic. And the weird thing is Microsoft and GitHub brought this to market as a product. And to be honest, that kind of blows my mind because there is a whole legal can of worms here. And that can of worms has not been settled yet. So if you're wondering what GitHub Copilot is all about, well, this is now a commercial project. We'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, that helps you write code. And when you see the demos, you're going to have your mind blown. This actually is very very cool. What it does is it reads what you've written. So it reads your comments and it reads your function names and then it fills in the blanks. Everything you see here in blue, this was written by Copilot automatically. So it knows uh, up here what to do and down here what you want to have it do. So here we go. So write some SQL. So we want to create category summaries. Boom, it does it. You want to parse expenses. Here we have, again, parse expense and then we got some comments telling it how to work with it, like how we're going to format our data and so on and so forth. Boom, it writes the code for you. This is impressive stuff. Now you see here, most examples are TypeScript, Go, Python, Ruby, also uh, JavaScript and Java in this case. It does seem to work with C++ and so on. It says across dozens of languages. It never actually lists the languages it supports. Uh, but as we're going to see from in just a minute, it, it will work with C and C++ in like a spectacularly failed way. Um, so it should work with your language of choice. Uh, again, it, it it's using common code that it's mostly learned from the GitHub repositories uh, to make suggestions for you. And you can see again, a number of different examples. Here's a Ruby example. Uh, it's reading your sources. It figures out the rest for you. It, it's impressive coding for sure. And it takes away some of the drudgery. Again, it's parsing through the way that you write your code and then figuring out the rest for you. You have the ability to reject the code that it spits out at any time. Also, it is available as plugins for a number of different tools out there. Uh, so Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code both have support for this, as does NeoVim, which is a product I intend to cover at some point in the future, uh, as well as the various different JetBrain IDEs as a plugin. So WebStorm, uh, IntelliJ IDEA, uh, Sea Lion, Rider, etc. You can run this in all of those IDEs. Um, you do need to have an account, unfortunately. So here we can see a number of different. So you want to fetch tweets, literally fetch tweets. Boom, it does the rest of the code. There it is in JavaScript. There it is in Python. There it is in Ruby. There it is in TypeScript. And here it is in Go. Now I'm surprised Go got so much focus because it, it's not the most popular language in the world and it's really only strongly used at Google. But anyways, um, you got some kind of rundowns of what it's all about. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier on, it is now a product. So you can get a 60-day free trial of this guy, uh, but you have to sign up for one year. It's $10 a month on a, uh, on a monthly basis and $100 a year. And you have to sign up for that year basis and cancel before the two months is out to cancel your trial. I really kind of hate that. There's also a version of this coming for companies at some point in the future. We're going to come back to the frequently asked questions in just a minute because there there's a lot of questions that you want to have, especially when this first launched. Here is one of the most spectacular fails. So this is it literally pulling the square root. So this is C++ code or C code that's in action. It's a fast inverse square root and it's pulling off someone else's copyright. Now this is code taken verbatim from Quake, which is GPL licensed. Uh, that is problematic because the GPL license insists that basically all your existing code or derived code from it also needs to be under the GPL license. So you can argue this is not honoring the licensing of the code base it's working from. Actually, you can see from the first comment here from Tim Sweeney, who has their code uh, for Unreal Engine is published on GitHub, but it is not an open source project. There's a lot of projects out there where the code is available, but it's not licensed for use. So this hasn't been thought through. Not all repositories are public. Not all public repositories are open source licensed. Not all open source repositories are permissively licensed. And most permissively licenses aren't public domain, but have notice requirements. And that is very true. So you can't just train an AI on this stuff and let it just create code. You're getting into a whole lot of real weird legal entanglements here. And this example wasn't the only one. There was a bunch of stuff in place. Now we're going to see from a second when we go and check out the um, 
the frequently asked questions. They have worked to mitigate this. Um, also, at the same time, the Free Software Foundation, so uh, they're kind of the champions of the legal side of the open source community. Uh, they did a call for papers on the subject of, um, it was basically uh, AI services. As, so, so this is about the whole genre in general, but it was started by Copilot because it really uh, raises some concerns about where it's impinging on licensing and so on. They did a call for papers. These are the ones that they picked to follow up. So these are a number of people such as a fellow at the University of Durham, a PhD candidate, uh, someone from the Software Freedom Conservancy, uh, uh, someone from Dalhousie University, and so on. So there are a number of academics that have written papers on this subject. This is not something that is settled law or ethically or anything else. So this is why it kind of blows my mind that Microsoft are willing to charge for it. Because once you start making something a product, there is a certain legal liability you're opening yourself up to, I believe. Uh, and this is not a simple or straightforward thing. So we're going to go back over here to the frequency act, frequently asked questions on the Copilot page, and we're going to look at a few of these things. First off, it does not write perfect code, uh, but it does a pretty good job. So they said uh, uh, it gives you the option of rejecting or accepting the code that they did. Um, so 27% uh, of developers, uh, we found that on average, more than 27% of developer code files were generated by GitHub Copilot and certain languages that goes up to 40%. For suggested code, certain languages like Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, and Go might perform better compared to other languages. So that's also probably why we're seeing the fails in the land of C and C++. C and C++ are actually uh, like lexiconically way more complicated than say Go or um, JavaScript or so on. So that might be part of the problem there, why those ones are failing a little bit more. Um, so also at the same time, can it um, create some insecurities? And this is definitely another area that it was reported on earlier on. It was basically taking insecure code and accepting it verbatim. And at the same time, you have to manually approve the code. So this isn't a code writer. This is a code suggester. You're supposed to still evaluate the code, do your security checks and so on. So really on this one, I don't think you can blame Copilot, but do realize it can actually put bugs into your code. And the funny thing is if somebody wanted to do a big enough exploit, they could create hundreds or thousands or millions of GitHub repositories with an exploit in them that this thing isn't smart enough to know that that's a, a hack approach. And if you think, okay, that sounds really kind of shady. Hey, the NSA tried to backdoor uh, the SSJ protocol or SSL protocols in the past. So this is not uh, beyond the pale of something happening. Corporate sponsors and large enough malicious groups will do this. Uh, sorry, uh, government sponsors for sure will do something like this as AI becomes more prevalent. So do beware. There are some issues. Also, we've got here, this is what we saw earlier in uh, this example. It's literally straight out spitting out some code. But ironically, it's not spitting out the actual proper license for it. They said about 1% of the time that happened. Um, these cases is basically if if it didn't get enough context about the code, that's where it can start to fail and copy, you know, sunk chunks of code that are greater than 150%. They're saying 99% of their code is basically newly generated. So you're only going to get 1%, which is a copy. Well, if your 1% of your code is in legal violation, that's still 1% of a huge problem. Now, one of the suggestions, though, is this is now available. So if it contains over a certain threshold of directly copied code, you can have it completely reject that result outright. So this example that we showed where it was copying the Quake source code, that has been uh, mitigated. There's a filter you can turn on to get rid of that problem. So that's sort of the, the issues here. Another thing to be aware of, uh, telemetry. There's a lot of telemetry. Uh, so they may use it for directly improving GitHub Copilot, developing a closer related developer products from GitHub, Microsoft, and OpenAI. OpenAI's Codex is what they use to develop this. Uh, potential abuse evaluation, uh, performance evaluation, the code generation, and so on. I think this one alone is enough that most people should say, uh-uh, not doing it, no. Because who's to say it's also not evaluating your generated code as part of this process. I find the telemetry on this one completely creepy, and I don't see any way to actually turn it off. So that is a big deal breaker there. Now, they do cover that whole, what about your private code? So we use data, including information about which suggested user accepts to provide the model, uh, practices in accordance with our privacy statement, uh, to sure that your code snippets will not be used as suggestion for other GitHub copilots. So they're saying, we only look at how you interact with the code that we generate, not the actual code you yourself are writing. Uh, I just honestly don't know if if I actually trust it. Because the weird thing is, they've actually like 
put comments from like other programmers in their generated code. So uh, this is a legal can of worms. It is really cool. Uh, I can see it definitely being, I hate to say it, but this is ultimately the future of programming to some degree. AI assisted coding tools are going to happen. I just honestly do not think that the legal and ethical questions have been answered to the point where Microsoft should even think about making this commercial, but they did. So if you're interested, uh, you can sign up right here. Once again, you can get a 60-day free trial if you sign up for the yearly plan. So you get the first two months for free in that one. Or monthly plan at 10 bucks a month. Uh, if you're maintaining an open source project or you're a student, you can get this completely for free. So, hey, this Plagiarism 101 is just rocket. And this is going to make... I don't know how CS 101 level codes or courses are going to cope with GitHub, which is literally creating people's homework. Uh, and it, it's going to be harder to detect if it was plagiarized or not. I don't know how the world is going to handle that particular bit. Uh, but if you're a student, hey, you've got the ultimate cheating tool here. And uh, yeah. And so again, I, I honestly do think two things that are a real mistake are teaching computers to program and arming them. And we've done both now. So let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.